Now, um, the, one, the key synthetic strategy we used here that we never talked about before is shifting a functional group between adjacent carbons. A good way to shift functional group from one carbon to another is to do an elimination and then an addition. Because notice that in this picture, there's only a functional group on one of the carbons. But when you form a pi bond, there's a functional group between two carbons. And then because we have both Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov approaches, we can then do an addition that puts the functional group on the opposite carbon to where it started. So that's how you would think to do this. You would say, gee, I need to shift my functional groups between two adjacent carbons. Well, maybe forming a pi bond and then adding to it is going to be the way to, to deal with that. And the important chapter 22 material here is, again, the extra reactivity of benzylic carbons. So earlier we learned that benzylic carbons can be oxidized to carboxylic acids, and now we're learning that they are very reactive for radical halogenations as well. Okay. And then B, just that From that same problem? Yeah. Okay. B and C and So here's another synthesis. The first thing we have to do is decide what type of functional group this is. Yeah, we just need to have recognize that this is a condensed notation for an amide. They said that you were allowed to start with a methyl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they started with the methyl. So first you would have the acetyl. Yeah. So it seems like you would get a fair amount of ortho attack here. Oh, but they said you can assume that the para isomer may be separated efficiently from any mixtures of ortho and para substitution products. <laughs> assume that the para isomer may be separated efficiently from mixtures of ortho and para. So I guess we would get a mixture of ortho and para here, but they said to assume that we can separate out the para. So we don't need to worry about that. We'll separate out the para from the ortho. So that's a good first step. Okay. Use Na2. CR2O7 with acid and the carboxylic. What does that do? Or the carboxylic drink. That's the reaction we were just talking about earlier, right? This is one of the ways of oxidizing the benzylic carbon. And this is why I had a question, because many times we've like said that we first have to make it into SOCl2 to put a Cl and then add the NH3, but like many times they don't. So Right. When is it, I know, but like I'm just saying, like, when is it right to do it and when is it wrong to do it, or just always do it just in case? Um, probably the, the best thing is to, to so they use the, the thionyl chloride here? Yeah. Yeah, so that's probably the best way. Let's talk about both of it. It is possible to go straight from a carboxylic acid to, acid to an amide. It's probably, it's just not as good a reaction. So let's see the two ways to do this. So you could do it like this. So when in doubt, just do it, basically? Yeah, I, I would say both of those are permissible. Remember that uh, it's, it's possible that the way that, uh, at this point, you've learned so much organic chemistry that there, uh, there can definitely be more than one correct way to solve a problem. Uh, usually the SOCO2 is, is the best way. So this put, because that puts us at the top of the reactivity chart. And then this step was? We don't need any catalysts because this is so reactive. This is just one of our normal addition elimination attacks on the carboxylic acid derivative. Now we could also just go here in one step. Now why is this reaction not as good? Just trying to have the amine attack here. 
Why because can't we just have the amine attack here? The amines could react with something else. Who else? The leaving group CL. Let's see. Steel and H, we think. That's the key. This is an acid, and this is a base. The main reason this reaction doesn't work so well is that there's a competing acid-base reaction where this becomes ammonium and this becomes carboxylate. So one of the competing reactions is that the ammonia can just steal a proton to look like this. However, that reaction is reversible. The proton is really going to keep flipping back and forth between the ammonia and the carboxylic acid. So if you add heat and you wait long enough, you'll still get a good yield of this. So if you do want to go directly from the carboxylic acid to the amide without using thionyl chloride, the trick is ammonia plus heat. If you don't add the heat, then you're going to mainly just get the, de the deprotonated carboxylate and the ammonia. Um, but because that reaction is reversible, and this reaction is not reversible because this is a very stable compound here, so um, if you add heat and you wait a while, you'll get a good yield of this. All right, so I think either of these would be, would be good answers to this question, but this is probably a little safer because we don't have to worry about the competing acid-base reaction. So it is possible to go directly from carboxylic acids to amides, but there's the complication of the competing acid-base reaction, so you'd have to have heat, heat to make this work. So probably it's better to do it the thiol chloride way. And then C. C was basically the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. um, just at the end, when they wanted to replace the carboxylic acid, mm -hmm. they just used an alcohol instead of first turning it into CL. Can we just do it? It's the same exact way, the same way. So is this the step you were talking about, going from here to here? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can go through all of it, because... Okay. So I'm starting from the beginning. So we're starting from benzene and trying to make this? Methyl, toluene. I started with the methyl. Okay, and they're trying to make this? Mm -hmm. Steps. So how would we do this? First form into carboxylic acid. Why can't we just add a fennel thing to alkanoylation? Uh, reasonable. It seems like we could add a. Uh, we we could add this like group here. In the instruction, it doesn't say that you can use a minimum of whatever carbons or like. Yeah. Right. They basically do that just forming it. So yeah. Yeah. Seems like this would work. All right. In any case, we've got uh, this. And that's SCL2 to do what you just did. Now I'm talking with a toluene aluminum trichloride. Like this? Yeah. So basically what Celine just said. Just so you're saying that they, they started with one toluene and now they're using another toluene. No. 
Oh, gotcha. So yeah. this is going to be the electrophile, and this will get attacked by it. Okay. expect that this would add in the para position. So it's going to add over here. So here's where the methyl group is. That will give us this intermediate. Mm -hmm. All right. 